Hello and welcome to this short technology primer brought to you by North Border Software. My name is Gary. What I'd like to look at in this video is the concepts of pulse code modulation or PCM for short. Uh, as with everything, this video is here to augment the uh, written tutorial which can be found on my website which is www.northborder-software.com forward slash tutorials. The objectives of this uh, tutorial twofold. Uh, first, it's for anybody who wants to acquire a basic understanding of pulse code modulation or PCM for short. I'll be talking about the terminology used, uh, the techniques, uh, how it works, etc. Just from a basic level, so you've got that grounding. Uh, it's also a preamble for the people who want to go on to do the Android development side of things where I'll be looking at uh, how to synthesize waveforms. Um, some of the tools that are available in Android um, draw on the, the pulse code modulation side of things to uh, reproduce waveforms. So the information here will just give you a better, more deeper understanding of how and why um, things are set out and they are in that environment, uh, I enjoy environment. Um, so what is pulse code modulation? Uh, it's quite simply the process by which analog signals are digitized prior to storage or transmission. Um, in a storage environment that could be uh, CD audio or a .wav file. In a transmission environment it may be digitized voice for transmission over E1 or T1 circuitry which has been around for a, a number of years. So the origins of PCM go back to the early part of the 20th century, about the 1920s. The first patents were awarded in 1937 to a British engineer uh, called Alec Reeves. Um, well, the first implementations were during and just after the Second World War, uh, primarily for specialist military applications, radar, etc. Um, but it's working in the 1950s and 1960s, um, looking at the digitization of voice for transmission over telecommunications systems. Uh, that's really led to the first widespread adoption of uh, PCM for uh, commercial use. Um, the basic building block, which was the outcome of that work, the DS0, uh, is still found today in uh, PDH and SDH transmission systems. It's the fundamental uh, building block of um, digitized voice. Um, but it's still around in many more modern high fidelity music formats. Uh, Audio CD uses uh, pulse code modulation. Uh, the same information is encoded into .wav files and .aif files. Um, and they all use uh, what we call linear PCM techniques. Um, so let's go on to see uh, really what it's all about and how it works. So how does pulse code modulation work? Uh, in figure one, the input, the analog input I want to sample is the sine wave which is in blue. Uh, I've overlaid a grid uh, over this wave. Um, it has a bit depth of four given as 16 levels, zero to 15. Now every time period T, I'll take a, a measurement of the analog value of that sine wave and then map that to the equivalent digital level. So um, obviously the first one there is uh, 7 and then the next one is 12 and then nearly 15 is, is the one after that. And that's all we do really. Um, we take an analog signal, we, we put that into an analog to digital converter and we have digital values uh, unknown time period T. Uh, and to reverse that, to recover that signal, we just put that into a digital to analog converter and that produces the analog waveform back. Um, so you can see a couple of potential problems here. Um, if you look at fi figure two, the, um, the waveform, the analog waveform in this scenario, uh, the value actually sits between two digital levels. Uh, so that causes an error. We have to either truncate that or round that off to the nearest value. And that's what's referred to as a quantization error. Another potential problem is associated with the time period T. Any spikes in the analog waveform, any deviation that happens within uh, that time period um, is not going to be captured. We're only sampling actually on the time period, so we could potentially lose a lot of information. So clearly um, you can see there's actually two things we can do to increase the accuracy of the, uh, the quantized, the digitized uh, waveform compared to the uh, the analog input. We can increase the bit depth so we have a, a greater number of sample levels 
and also we can reduce the uh, the time period between the samples to do that we increase the sample rate which is uh, defined as one over the uh, time period there are three other things to note before we move on from this slide uh, if you look back at figure one there the the spacing between the levels is the same for every single level so this is referred to as a linear scheme or LPCM scheme there are schemes uh, out there which uh, use nonlinear techniques and I'll talk a little bit about those later on uh, also there's no compression associated with this particular uh, example um, there are also schemes to compress data once it's been digitized uh, mp3 etc uses compressed um, music formats uh, but I'm not going to talk about compression in this particular tutorial uh, one term we haven't discussed as well is that of fidelity uh, when you compare the digitized waveform to the analog inputs the higher the fidelity the closer the digitized waveform is to the um, the analog waveform so the higher the fidelity um, the more uh, I guess the better the results are just want to spend a little bit of time talking about some popular PCM schemes uh, I say schemes because there's no one single standard that really defines which parameters should be used for pulse code modulation it really depends on the application uh, that, that you have and the uh, the quality that you want to achieve uh, we don't need as much quality to transmit voice uh, for telephony purposes compared to what we wish to attain from audio CD so from a voice perspective a bit depth of 8 and 8 kilohertz sample rate is sufficient uh, for what we need to achieve uh, that's compared to 16 bits of bit depth for audio CD with a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz um, those sample rates do need some explanation um, luckily we do have a slide further on which will help to explain why those figures are what they are in, in the slide here we do have some file formats uh, which fortunately for us are designed in a way that will actually accept the, the data from uh, audio CD um, directly um, the .wav is be the one you're most familiar with more likely than not um, what we want to avoid doing when we're uh, moving from one file format to another is do some requantization every time we requantize uh, a bit stream we're going to lose the fidelity or reduce the quality even further so that's something we need to avoid doing one thing to point out that voice and audio CD and the dot waves are all linear schemes with no compression so I want to talk a little bit about the Nyquist Shannon sampling theorem uh, it's very important from a pulse code modulation perspective that we understand what this is uh, what we want to do is make sure that we capture the highest frequency that we need to within any particular pulse code modulation stream um, if we look at voice then we have a frequency range of 300 to 3.4 kilohertz now the highest frequency we want to capture is 3.4 kilohertz now this is referred to as the Nyquist frequency and to ensure we capture that we need to sample at at least that Nyquist frequency so that at least that highest frequency and that's referred to as the Nyquist rate now if we round that 3.4 kilohertz up to 4 kilohertz and select 8 kilohertz then that's a nice round sampling rate to actually uh, deal with from a voice perspective however when we come to sample audio music and uh, then we need to take into account the entire range of human um, hearing and then that's 20 Hertz up to uh, 20 kilohertz uh, so we actually choose this rate of 44.1 kilohertz now why 44.1 and not 40 kilohertz uh, well to understand that we need to look at the early days of CD audio recording uh, rather than invent complete new equipment they adapted existing video storage devices to actually do the uh, to do the job now 44.1 kilohertz happens to be a rate uh, by which we can actually store NTSC and PAL video formats on the same equipment now I'm not going to go into the details of that but there's certainly uh, plenty of information on the inf internet if you're interested in to understand the, uh, the background to that uh, but that's why we choose 44.1 kilohertz so in summary, uh, what you've learned from this primer is a uh, basic overview of pulse code modulation, uh, the terminology and the techniques that are applied, uh, linear and nonlinear schemes, 
Uh, so it's very good piece of background knowledge. So uh, if that's what you're looking for, then that's fine. Um, but it's really a preamble for the people who want to go on to do uh, some Android Java programming to develop some form of function generator or synthesized waveform. Um, the techniques here uh, are kind of slightly different in that uh, we're not going to sample um, an input waveform. If you've got something that's uh, predictable, like a sine wave or square wave, you can actually use mathematical formulae to predict what the quantized level would be uh, for that particular waveform, and that's what we're going to do. Um, but then we use the audio track, which is, a, uh, I guess, a feature within Android um, that allows you to um, reproduce sounds from dot .waves, etc. So that's the, the tools we're going to be using to actually reproduce this waveform. Um, anyway, hope you found this uh, technology primer useful. Um, that's all we've got on this particular subject for now, and hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day. Cheers.